my god! Oh my god! Are you okay? All right, I mean, that's pretty much it. I got it all dialed. Everything that I wanted to do worked out, so that's a first for us. Uh, this thing's pretty sweet. I don't even know what I would end up doing to it next, so I guess I'm just going to ride it now. All right, just got back from the Power Sports store. I bought some new things to overhaul both of these bikes because this is a Predator 224, this is a 212. You know, this is obviously the bigger vehicle. It needs the most torque. We are gonna be doing an engine swap. This is going to be getting the 212. This will be getting the 224. Now, because this has the torque converter set up, the RPM of the motor is limited by the front pulley. It will not blow up even if it's governed. That's a controversial opinion, but we've proved that it's true. This motor here with the centrifugal clutch, however, will blow up. So, because this 224 is fully ungoverned, we have decided to add some billet parts. I bought a new rod. The flywheel will be here in the mail tomorrow. So we are going to do that today. I'm going to do that now. All right, this is pretty much like a routine at this point. Let's just start tearing it down. We don't need this emission where we're going. Time to drain the oil. This is the washer that blew up one of Owen's motors. All right, here is our billet rod compared to our stock rod. I'm just gonna do some verification to make sure it is the same size and then this is going in. We have a big problem. This scoops, scrapes here and this scrapes there. To be continued. All right, welcome back to the bench. It's been a couple days since you last saw the issue that we were working on right there, but as you can see, we have a second 224 on the bench. Um, when we were doing some forensic analysis, we learned that the cap of the rod was completely chewed up and nicked the entire inside of the block, and there's some heat soak on the crank. You can see the discoloration on either side of the journal for the rod and where the flywheel mounts. So there could be some slight warping. We're gonna take this one apart to compare the bits, see if this would solve that problem, and then we're gonna move from there. So let's get the oil out of this and tear this one down. All right, so now I'm gonna try this crank in this motor, see if it will somehow solve the issues. So same issue, so that means it's not the crank. So now what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to install a billet rod in Callum's engine to see if it's the casting. Welcome back again. This is my Hail Mary before ordering a third billet rod. So as you know, this billet rod, the ARC 6773, which is supposedly designed for this motor and the Ducar 212, has not been quite working out for me. The length of this rod is 3.308. Now, EC Carb sells a rod that we know is designed for this motor. It actually is designed to fix some of the issues that we're having here, but I have made a purchase of the Amazon rod that we used in Satara's motor on her bike. It's $40 cheaper, it came with prime shipping, and it is the exact specs, which is 3.303 with the proper wrist pin diameter, and hopefully this will alleviate our issues. If this is, this is a first for the internet, a uh, cheap billet rod being used in this motor. Let's give it a try. Let's check the wrist pin. Somehow it is not the proper wrist pin. Well, that didn't work. Even though it said online that it was. So it looks like we're ordering the arc rod. Take three of billet rod. We have 
it in. Let's open it up. Sticker, which is definitely going on the toolbox if this solves our issue. It definitely looks a little low, lower profile. This one might be forged instead of milled. So just to be clear, this is a 3.03 inch rod compared to the stock length replacement, which is a 3.308 inch rod. This is the recommended arc variant. And let's see what we got here. The length is definitely different. The beam also looks a little different. It definitely looks a little shallower down here, which is perfect for what we're looking for. But look at that contoured dipper. Even if the wrist pin on the uh, 3.303 that we tried before, even if that was the right size, I still think that this one is definitely clearanced a little more down here. There's just less meat on the beam, which is a lot better for what we're trying to go for. So I'm really, I'm really hopeful about this. Let's get it in there and pray. All right, we've got fantastic clearance against side here, up at the top. It's pretty close with this, but honestly, it's a lot better than it was. Whoa, that's a new one. We're having some top difficulty. Okay, well that works. Apparently Black66, another YouTuber, has had a similar issue with this. Maybe that just requires some light clearancing and then maybe we could be okay. Before we do that though, let's uh, check out the cam spacing because a big thing about this rod that it claims to be able to fix is also cam spacing. Alright, I think it passes with this, but this one, this Metal Gear cam, the stock one from the Tillotsons, have a thicker shaft here, so let me put it in and see if that works. Alright, well EC Carbs definitely did that one right, because I can tell you none of the other billet rods, the Arc or the Clone, would have been able to accept this much thicker camshaft rod. Yeah, that's miles of clearance down in there. So actually the only clearance issue we're having is up here at the top, so that's fantastic. All right, we are over a week into our one-day project on this motor. I just finished up the final clearancing. I think we're spinning freely. We're all good now. Just going to pop the lifters back in, put the side cover back on, and we can start rebuilding this motor finally. I cannot tell you how satisfying this feels right now. According to the master rejected content sheet, torque specs for the side cover, 17. I think that's a 17, right? That's Owen's handwriting, 17 foot pounds. This is our new flywheel. As you can see, it is not a full billet wheel. It is the reinforced wheel that is rated for up to 10,000 RPM. I chose this because it's about a quarter of the cost of the full billet. And being that this is a fully stock motor, just governor deleted, the 10,000 RPM that this is rated for should be absolutely no problem whatsoever. Bare block at least is back together. Now let's get to adding the accessories back. All right, new day. Last night, Owen and I got this motor fully running. Uh, finally, we had a slight carb issue, but we were able to sort it with the proper gaskets. I got the motor here on the bench just to take it apart before it goes back on the cart to ensure that the clearancing went well. So far everything is looking really good. No nicks or dings on the rod, not an excess amount of shavings. So I think this motor is ready to go right back together and end up on that cart. Today we are going to be ripping it. After many hours we did it! It's back together. I can't take it anymore! Daddy came in the garage and fixed it. That's why this light isn't turned on. No. <laughs> Engine daddy, I'm Checking. the pred daddy. You're the pred <laughs> daddy? <laughs> Alright, put it on the go-kart so I can set some laps. I'm bro. gonna be greasy first! Hey, boy, 
the brake doesn't work and I needed you to fire it back up. Uh, the brake doesn't work at all? Bud, you have no brakes, bud! Dude! <laughs> Anything up. This vehicle is cursed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you counter steering. It's got power now. I like. I made a mess in the backyard. Oh. Yeah, look at the ruts it made. Will he die? Will he live? Well, let's find out. Toys for a flight. My horsepower go kart. Oh, for <laughs> me. Oh my god! Oh my god! We're good. I see what you mean now. I told you!